that happened. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So this is a one wheel pint. One wheel pint X. Yes, I did get yeeted off of the Pint X the other day for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And we're gonna talk about that after we talk about these two one wheels right here, the Pint and the Pint X. This one has about 233 miles on it. And this one now has 44 miles on it, which isn't so bad because I just got this one a few weeks ago. And if you haven't checked it out already, I did kind of a first ride comparison video about these two here. So about the more details behind them and how they look, which is obviously very similar. This one being a little bit more heavy and more expensive. This one, of course, being a little bit cheaper, which is nice, less range, less speed, and of course the coloration. You can make this all module. You can accessorize these as much as you would like. They take the same fender, pint fender, pint fender. This video is more about what I think is the difference between the two in terms of which would you want to get because they're both available. All right, one is a little bit cheaper, like I said, about 1050 or so, and this one is approaching that 14 to $1,500 range, depending on the sales and packages they have available. Because I actually just did a very long ride on the Pint X not too long ago here, and it was just a straight shot from 100% all the way down to about 3% on the battery. I got thrown off at 8%, which was very unfortunate because I've only been thrown off three times. And two of those times were kind of my fault. This one was not my fault at all. I was just riding, cruising, and at about 8%, the board was going smooth, and then all of a sudden just went down. And you could feel it all of a sudden stopping for no reason, which meant when you're leaning forward, going whatever it was, like 10, 12 miles per hour at the time, it went straight down, but it was like real slow. It's almost like it just kind of gave out or something or didn't sense the battery level correctly because when it gets low enough, these things will let you know. You'll feel it kind of tip the nose up a little bit, kind of like a pushback. And I've had that before. The second time I got thrown off, this is my third time, the second time I got thrown off was on this one. And luckily I was going very slow. I was seeing when the thing finally threw you off and when it died. So I was going like two miles per hour down the sidewalk and at like 5%, it let me know it was dying and then just went. And when it did that, it, as it leaned back, if you were leaning forward at all, it just went right forward. <laughs> and then I ran off of it. So it wasn't too bad. Now, the first time I got thrown off was my fault. It was the pint, like the first 10 miles I owned it. And I was just going up a hill, hit a bump, still learning how to do my balance. So maybe avoid hills and all that stuff when you're first 10 miles or so. Just kind of flat, slow, learn to ride a bit. I was going, ended up hitting a bump. The board just went like that real quick. My heel went off like this and it was like half off the board, which meant this thing started tilting like this. It went like that, my foot touched. This went down, I flew off, landed on my side, and it did hurt, but I just scraped my elbow a little bit. And so when I fell on this one, I went straight sideways, kind of landed on my back a little bit. I didn't tear up too much, didn't break anything. I ended up scraping up my shoulder a little bit, scraping my elbow, slashed my hand a little bit. Not too bad, banged up my side of my leg, not the knee. Don't get the knee, that's important too. Uh, but I didn't break anything, so everything's fine. Uh, just kind of healing up, a little stiff, nice big bruise on the back there. You know, these are safe for the most part, especially after all these miles of riding. I mean, almost 300 miles or so between these two boards. You can still cruise with them. They're fairly safe in my opinion, but there's a few things you have to know, and this is gonna go for either one you buy, and then we'll talk about which one to buy. Number one, 
100% battery, depending on whichever one you have. You have the extended range here. Real world is about maybe 16 to 18 miles. This one, the pint, realistically, six, seven miles, about the three mile mark, turn around. <laughs> or if you have an Apple Watch, or if you have your phone on you, as soon as you hit 60%, so keep an eye on that 60%, 60% seems to be the magic number, turn around with either one of these, because by the time you turn around, you don't know what kind of inclines you're gonna hit on the way back, and what's gonna happen is at about 10%, it's gonna flag on there saying notification 10% low battery through the app, and that is the point where you really need to slow down or get off that board. And that's my point number two. If you hit 10%, slow down or get off these boards because batteries are still, it's just a guessing game. I mean, think about when you're using fuel or when you're using batteries on the phone or everything starts to slow down when you're kind of going below that 10%, all right? So if you're running low on something, you can't really trust how much is actually left on the meter. So 10%, get off because I've been throwing off 5%, I've been throwing off at 8%. So number one, 60%, turn around. Trust me, you do not want to be carrying these heavy boards with the awkward mag handles on the back here a long distance. All right, they are just not the most cumbersome thing to carry around. Second thing, make sure you're at 10%. Get off these boards or go really slow. Honestly, just you can just go slow. If they kick you off at one to two miles per hour or something, or three or four even, you can step off and run. And I tried to run off when I was going like that. Honestly, I was probably going like 15 miles per hour with this. So it's kind of hard to run off of a board going that fast. Um, so just kind of keep an eye out. Go real slow under 10% there and you'll be just fine. There's no real safety issues there. Although it's kind of weird that it kicked me off at 8% for no reason whatsoever. Number three, this right here. This is a uh, triple eight helmet. You can get them off Amazon. I have a nice scratch right here because when I landed, of course I hit my shoulder first and my elbow and then like kind of knocked my head like that. It wasn't super violent or anything, but it probably would have caused some nice cuts there if I didn't have a helmet on. And there's a lot of people who, uh, you've seen pictures, there's actually one wheel Facebook groups of just insane crashes. This is a large, by the way, 22.5 to 23.5 inches. And this thing, honestly, legit lifesaver. I know it's not cool, but you know it's really not cool? It's getting seriously injured and stuck in the hospital for a long period of time. Wear a helmet. It doesn't matter how slow you're gonna go if you're just gonna get the mail. It doesn't matter. There's stories all the time, like I said, on Facebook groups. There are people who just went to go down the driveway on the one wheel, ended up just like falling. They didn't see a hole. There's a night ride or something, and they just bashed their head in. They, they broke bones. Like, you just wanna be safe. Just wear at least the helmet. Uh, elbow pads, knee pads, as uh, Colton would tell me the other day when he saw my shoulder, he's like, Ew. and he's like, you should get some shoulder pads. I was like, yep, I am going to be dressed up like a football player riding down the street for sure. <laughs> but at the very least, helmet. So Christmas is coming up. Which one? We talked about price. We talked about the miles per hour. We talked about the distance, kind of how fast you can go. In fact, I don't know if I mentioned, but this thing only gets up to about 14, 15 miles per hour. Uh, that's about the max speed I've only seen in real time. Like I said before this, I have seen 19, even a little bit more than 19 miles per hour. So this is kind of a good setup right here if you want to go a little bit faster, but just note the safety precautions when you do go faster and be careful of that battery drain. So which one would you get? With Christmas coming up, you want to spend a little bit less money, get a little bit less performance out of it, a little bit less distance, a little bit less speed, same carvability, same tire, same kind of setup, modular, accessorize, all that. Or do you want to spend a little bit more money and get something a little bit more upgraded, a little bit more distance, a little bit faster? Now it really depends on who the rider is. Now think about this for a second. The example would be maybe Apple or a television. You have all these model numbers and they say, you know, 300 bucks more gets you this much more. Do you need that? Do you need the one terabyte solid state hard drive? Do you need that TV with the 8K resolution when 4K is more than enough, right? So it depends on which your needs are when you get these. So if you're a first time rider getting this for your kid, just get the pint. They don't need to be going fast. Six miles is honestly plenty um, because of the fact that, I'll tell you right now, 16 miles on here, if it wasn't for my shoulder bleeding and my arm like dripping down my hand, 
my feet would be the thing I'd be concerned about because I had to jump off of this board a few times on that last ride just because foot fatigue. The pint you can accessorize somewhat uh, much like the other more expensive, like the XR they have, you can accessorize the foot pads and all that to help with foot fatigue. But riding a one wheel, riding a board for 15, 16, 20 miles, that's a long ways, to be honest. It's not like a bike where you're sitting down. I mean, you're resting on your feet. You can carve as much as you can. That really helps with foot fatigue. Honestly, carving is a great way to help with foot fatigue. And it's the only way really you can keep your feet from falling asleep and then kind of bending at the knees a little bit, move around somewhat. Uh, it's just, it's a ton of fun, but at distance, it can get a little bit uh, not as fun. So that would be the thing I'd concerned about is you really, if you need that distance. So, pint, a little over a thousand dollars. Pint X, about 1500 bucks. My suggestion as a first time rider, just go pint. They're very similar feel. There's a little bit more performance, a little bit more distance, speed out of the Pint X, but beyond that, this is heavier. You have a little bit less ground clearance because there's a larger battery, and this has like a buffer up here. It's just all like plastic, where you can tell here this is a little bit thinner. All right, so beginner, first time rider, Pint, very similar. Again, you can save three, 400 bucks if you go to the Pint. If you do want that speed, if you already have a Pint, if you have an XR, you want something small and compact, which is what the Pint's good for, go with the Pint X because you get a little bit of speed. It's great for like the cities, for taking on road trips. I love taking these one wheels on road trips. Me and the wife ride all over the place. When you find a greenway, went to like Nashville, Tennessee, not too long ago and just found a greenway. She has an electric scooter. I ride the, the Pint at the time and just cruise and you get to check out a city in a whole new way. And you don't have to just walk around or, or rent anything when you're there or drive from the car or anything like that. You can just go and ride around and it's a great way to safely check out a city or a new area. So that's my suggestions on the Pint versus the Pint X and which one you should go. Last note would be battery. Obviously, you know, battery is gonna affect the speed and the distance and that's why the Pint X is a slightly heavier board than the Pint, still very manageable, but the battery takes about maybe two, three hours to charge on here. When I killed this battery after that last ride down to 3%, I got the notification six hours later on just the normal pint charger, six hours to charge it up from dead, basically dead all the way up to 100%. So you're looking at almost double the, double the distance. So you can expect double the time to charge the battery. So hope this video finds you guys well. If you have any questions or comments, just hit them down below in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. I am doing pretty good, uh, a little stiff there. Pretty sure I like stretched something in there, but everything seems to be functioning fine. That's why I haven't been to the range or anything recently in the last week or so. I need to get back out. Got some really cool videos coming up, so stay tuned for those. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button, really helps me out. Head over to Instagram, follow me there. Like us on Facebook for all the latest and greatest deals on the internet, and I'll see you guys in the next review.